Hello viewer, you are watching Elim TV, the channel where you watch and learn. I'm um, your teacher Benjamin Makanda and I invite you to form free chemistry and we are going to discuss the topic gas law. Under gas law we will be looking at Graham's law of diffusion. Before we begin our lesson, I would like to give you the following contact so that you can be able to contact us or send your email, send your SMS, questions and compliments on the number 22. What well, 518, that's the SMS number. You can also use our, our Facebook page, Elimu TV, and also follow us on Twitter at Elimu underscore KA. Now, before we begin our lesson, I just want to have a recap of the, what we discussed in the last lesson. We were still dealing with Boyle's uh, gas laws, and under gas laws, we looked at, we looked at Boyle's law and Charles' law. So we discussed we discussed gas laws here. Gas laws and the two gas laws that we looked at in our last lesson were Charles Law and Boyle's Law. Now today we want to discuss the third law, which is called Graham's Law of Diffusion. So in this one, we need to understand the term diffusion, Graham's law of diffusion. And under Graham's law of diffusion, first of all, we have to understand what diffusion is. We need to understand what diffusion is, and we're going to explain diffusion in two forms. We will look at diffusion in liquids and diffusion in gases. So after that, we'll be able to compare how diffusion takes place in gases. Now, one question that you may be asking is that uh, why are we not considering diffusion in solids? So when you look at the three states of matter, so we have the three states of matter here. So maybe the first one, these are solids. Now we have solid state, we have a liquid state, then the third one we have the gas state. Now looking at the arrangement of the particles in the three states of matter, you realize that in solid the particles are compacted. The particles are compacted. What we mean by this is that the particles are closely packed together. Now in liquid we have in the molecular spaces there exist in the molecular spaces in the liquid. What about gases? We have large in the molecular spaces. In gases we have large in the molecular spaces. The reason for this explains why we can be able to explain the fusion in liquids and gases but not in solids because the particles in solids are closely packed together meaning that the force of attraction between one particle and the other is so strong that the particles cannot move away from one another and therefore they, they are firmly held within their position. In liquids we have intermolecular spaces that exist which therefore facilitates the particles to move from one point to the other. However, in gases, the, la the large intermolecular spaces make the particles move even more faster because the forces of attraction between the particles are so weak that the particles can move on their own. Now, having said that, how do we compare the rate of diffusion in liquids? Diffusion in liquids. So to compare the diffusion in liquids, we have two setups here. We have the first setup. So and then we have this is the first beaker. This beaker is filled with we fill the beaker with water and then we also connect a delivery tube.
So in the first setup, this we have setup A and then we have setup B, we carefully drop through this delivery tube particles of potassium permanganate up to the bottom here. So we have this is potassium potassium permanganate and this potassium permanganate is purple in color and then after that we make an observation after five minutes. So at the beginning the potassium permanganate are here then after a while you realize that the potassium permanganate they get distributed throughout this liquid. They get distributed. So here this was just a clear water so it is colorless here. Then after a while, you note that after five minutes maybe, the particles of potassium permanganate that were highly concentrated here, they have spread all over the liquid. The particles have spread all over the liquid. So that the liquid that was colorless here, we now observe purple color. You note the difference? Here the purple color was concentrated at the bottom, while to the rest of the liquid, the color, it was colorless. But after a while, let's say five minutes, the whole liquid becomes purple. Meaning that the particles of potassium permanganate have been able to move from where their concentration is high to a region where the concentration is low. So this therefore te tells us that diffusion takes place in liquid. So what makes the particles of potassium permanganate move from this point to the other part? It's because, according to the Brownian motion, the particles of gas, the particles of matter, they are always in cont continuous. These particles are always in continuous random, random motion. The particles of matter are said to be in continuous random motion. And as a result of that, the particles, water particles or water molecules, they continuously bombard with the particles of potassium permanganate and in the process of collision, the particles split from one another and they are able to spread, spread throughout the liquid. So if we have in more of these particles at this particular point and they con con continue to actually collide with the particles of water, they, get, they spread throughout the liquid and now that concept is what we call the attrition. So after a period of five minutes, the entire liquid will be purple in color because the particles of potassium permanganate have moved from this point where their concentration is very high, their concentration is very high, to this other end where they con their concentration is low. Meaning that if you define the diffusion, then you have to refer these two terms, high and low. So the particles are moving from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So for this case, we are using potassium permanganate. Therefore, as a result of this, how do we define the diffusion? How do you define the diffusion? So this is how we define the diffusion. The diffusion is defined as the movement of particles from the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. That movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration is what we call the attrition. The particles of potassium permanganate have been able to move from a region where they are high in concentration, maybe region A, where the concentration is high, to region B, where their concentration is low. And in the process, they spread throughout such that the entire solution becomes purple. So we call that one diffusion. This therefore means that diffusion takes place in takes place in liquids. So having said that, we now want to look at diffusion in gases.
Just like it is in liquid, we also experience diffusion in gases. And not this, our topic is gas loss. And therefore, when we are talking about diffusion, we have to refer to gases. We are referring to gases. So we want to compare the diffusion in gases. Now, which gases are we going to use in this case? We are going to use ammonia. <laughs> ammonia gas and has the formula NH3 and hydrogen chloride gas. HCl. Ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride gas, HCl. So before we go now into details of how we can be able to compare the rate of diffusion of ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas, one physical property of ammonia chloride gas, sorry, ammonia gas is that this gas can be identified by it is characteristic smell. This gas has a characteristic smell. What's the smell of ammonia gas? I just want to give you a description. What's the smell of uh, of, of urine for example so the smell of urine is that of ammonia therefore ammonia has what we call a pungent irritating smell so this gas has a characteristic smell if you took a bottle of ammonia and if this was a classroom so this classroom has four corners and then maybe this one is an entrance, and then you place a bottle of ammonia here and you are sitting in this class. After a while, you will start observing some smell in this class if this bottle is opened from here. Because now the particles of ammonia, they are now spreading out of class throughout the classroom and in the process you will be actually feeling some smell. The smell are what we call pungent, irritating smell you will feel pungent irritating smell. So this is because ammonia gas is able to, to diffuse. That's one way in which you can be able to tell that diffusion takes place in ammonia. But now, the reason why we want to use ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride gas is because we want to compare the rate of diffusion of the two gases. How do we compare the rate of diffusion of ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas? Comparing diffusion of oh, sorry comparing the rate of diffusion of ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas. So we have this kind of a setup. So this is a tube, it's like a combustion tube. Then at this end, we have cotton wool. Soaked in ammonia. Solution, then the other end, we have cotton wool soaked in hydrogen hydrogen chloride solution HCl this is ammonia Just a stunt. So we have a stunt. Now we want to compare the rate of diffusion of these two gases. This ammonia, this ammonia solution is going to generate ammonium fumes, and these ammonium fumes are going to move in this direction. Then hydrogen chloride are also going to generate some fumes and they are also going to move in the other direction. So at the end of it all, the two fumes are going to meet within this tube. 
and when the two fumes meet, they are going to actually form a compound. So if you are to write an equation of the reaction that takes place when ammonia fumes and hydrogen chloride uh, gas fumes meet, then we have this kind of equation, this ammonia gas, then hydrogen chloride gas, when they meet, they form ammonium chloride, which is a solid. Ammonium chloride, that is a solid. So, this ammonium chloride that is formed, which is a solid here, has a characteristic color. So, the formation of ammonium chloride will lead to an observation. You observe a dense white fume. You will observe a dense white fume of ammonium chloride. So, meaning that when ammonia is moving and hydrogen chloride gas is moving, they will not meet close to point A, if this was taken as point A. Neither will they meet close around here, but they are going to meet somewhere within the tube. Then it is noted that the dense white fume meets at a point nearer B than it is towards A. So this one becomes ammonium chloride that is formed. So meaning that hydrogen chloride that is coming is going to meet with ammonia gas that is also coming from this end and they form ammonium chloride at this particular point. So if you are to observe, the distance covered to this end, maybe this is 10 centimeters, then this distance from here up to the other end, let's say maybe it's 5 centimeters. What do you notice? You observe that the distance covered by hydrogen chloride gas before it can meet ammonia gas is shorter than the distance covered by ammonium ammonia gas to meet with hydrogen chloride so that they are able to form what? Ammonium chloride. This therefore gives us an information, a very important information here that ammonia gas moves more faster than hydrogen chloride gas. So if you are to compare the two, you will say that ammonia chloride gas moves faster than hydrogen chloride gas. Now chemically we say ammonia chloride, ammonia gas, they are fuses more faster than hydrogen chloride gas. But that one is not enough. We have to compare how fast the two gases diffuse. So briefly, let's look at how these two gases will diffuse. We have just said that ammonia will cover a longer distance than hydrogen chloride gas. So comparing the rate of diffusion of the two gases, this is what we are going to have. The rate of diffusion of the two gases. First of all, this is the formula of ammonia ammonia gas. So we work out the relative formula mass of ammonia. Nitrogen has 14 and then we have hydrogen 1, sorry, 1 times 3. Then we are going to have the mass of ammonia as 17 grams. Then looking at hydrogen chloride gas, then we work out the relative formula mass. We are going to have hydrogen 1 plus chlorine is that 5.5. This is going to give us that 6.5 grams. Now, Comparing the two gases, then you realize that hydrogen chloride gas is heavier than ammonia gas. Meaning that the heavier the gas, the slow the rate at which the gas moves. So ammonia being having a low or being less dense than hydrogen chloride gas moves much faster than hydrogen chloride gas. And therefore, we have to compare the speed at which the two gases move. This now leads us to the rate of diffusion. So, we work out the rate of diffusion. How do you work out the rate of diffusion? The rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the square root of the density of that given gas. And this one is going to give us what we call the Graham's law of diffusion. So, if we go by this one here, then we are going to say the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas is inversely proportional to 1 out of the square root of, it is relative formula mass, which is 17 grams, relative formula mass of ammonia, ammonia gas. This one can become our equation number one. Then, we go to the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas is also inversely proportional to 1 out of the square root of the relative molecular mass of hydrogen chloride gas. So this is what we get. Now, how do we compare the rate of diffusion? If that is the case, then it means that when you take rate of diffusion, 
equals to constant rate of diffusion equals to constant out of the square root of relative molecular mass which is the same as the density of the gas so this one can be the relative density of ammonia or the relative formula mass of ammonia so this one can be taken as equation one then the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas can be taken as constant constant over the square root of density of hydrogen chloride gas this one becomes our equation number two so this is to mean when you make the constant in either case the subject of the formula like in this case here you will have rate of ammonia the efficient of ammonia gas times the square root of density of ammonia and then in this other case the rate of diffusion will be called the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas multiplied by the square root of density of hydrogen chloride gas and all this will give you a constant this will also give you a constant okay meaning that if you take the rate of diffusion for example the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas multiply by the square root of density of ammonia is equals to the rate of diffusion sorry of hydrogen chloride gas rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas multiplied by the square root of density of hydrogen chloride gas so if we were to divide through by rate of hydrogen chloride gas and then we divide here by rate of hydrogen chloride gas here we divide by the square root of density of ammonia gas and then we divide here by the square root of density of ammonia gas then this is what you get this and this goes out then this and this goes out so what are we going to get we are going to get this we will get the rate of diffusion of ammonia over the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas is equals to into the square root of density of hydrogen chloride gas over density of ammonia density of hydrogen chloride gas over density of ammonia and remember density of a gas is directly proportional to the relative relative formula mass of that gas rfm of the gas or relative molecular mass of the gas relative molecular mass of the gas this is the right term rmm of the gas and the rmm of this gas is now if we were to substitute we will get rate of diffusion of ammonia therefore will be equals to the square root of molecular mass of hcl over molecular mass of ammonia ammonia gas so if you work out this we will have the rate of diffusion of ammonia over the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas is equals to the square root of the molecular mass of hydrogen chloride gas that we have worked out is 36.5 that of ammonia is 17 and if you work out this then the rate of diffusion of ammonia over the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas is equals to we work out this value you will get 1.465 if you remove the square root sign then make the rate of ammonia the subject of the formula you will have the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas is equals to 1.465 the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas so this approximately gives you 1.5 of that value so this one if you are to interpret it means this that the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas is equals to 1.5 times 
the rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride gas. It means that ammonia gas diffuses 1.5 times faster than hydrogen chloride gas. So in this particular case, we have compared the rate of diffusion of ammonia gas to that of hydrogen chloride gas. To conclude, what you observe from this discussion, you note that the rate of diffusion relates with the relative density, the density of the gas, or the molecular mass of that particular gas. Now, according to Graham's law of diffusion, we therefore say that the rate of diffusion of a given gas, rate of diffusion of a given gas is inversely proportional to the square root of the density or molecular mass of that gas. The density or molecular mass of the gas. So rate are inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the gas. That's according to Graham's law. So if we have to compare the rate of diffusion of any two gases, then rate of diffusion of gas A is equal to constant over the square root of density of gas A, where D is the density of that gas A. Make this one equation one. Then, what about the rate of diffusion of gas B? Rate of diffusion of gas B equals to constant over the square root of density of gas B. So this one here becomes equation number two. If you compare the two equations, this means that the rate of diffusion of gas A times the square root of density of A is equals to constant and rate of diffusion of gas B times the square root of density of B is also equivalent to constant. Then the constants are the same. We therefore say the rate of diffusion of A multiplied by the square root of density of A is equals to the rate of diffusion of B multiplied by the square root of density of, of B. Now, this one gives us this. The rate of diffusion of A over, so maybe, let's just work it out. We divide here by the square root of density of A, square root of density of A, we divide here by the square, by rate of diffusion of B, we divide here by rate of diffusion of B. So density of A and density of A cancels on the right, left hand side. Then in this case, rate B and B cancels. So we end up having, therefore, rate of diffusion of gas A over rate of diffusion of gas B is equals to into the square root of density of gas B over density of gas A. And we say it, the density of a gas is directly proportional to the molecular mass. Therefore, the rate of diffusion of A over rate of diffusion of B is equals to into the square root of molecular mass of B over molecular mass of A. Understood? So we have just derived and related the rate of diffusion of the two gases. In our next lesson, when we meet, we shall look at how we can be able to apply this expression or equation to solve some of the problems that relate to the Graham's law and the rate of diffusion, and also relate, look at the relationship between the rate of diffusion and time of diffusion in our next lesson. I believe that you have enjoyed the lesson. So we are going to pick up from here in our next lesson. Up there, I've been your teacher, Benjamin Makanda. Until next time, stay tuned to LMTV. Thank you.